Hi everyone, thanks for coming. Um, I'm Hilary Rosen and I work at UKTV. I head up the, um, the factual side, the unscripted side of the commissioning at UKTV. Uh, and uh, I've been involved obviously in this series from the beginning. Uh, joining me on stage is Alice uh, Bowden. Alice, you've worked on the series since day one, haven't you? Yep, since day uh, one. Started as <laughs> series producer. Yep. And you're now uh, execing the series. Yeah. And uh, Stacey, uh, you need no introduction whatsoever. <laughs> um, I've seen that film many, many times. Uh, I commissioned it. We talked about it a lot. And uh, uh, it's uh, it's a very powerful watch. I haven't watched it for a little while, yeah. so I, I don't think you have either. No, so. we watched it prior to doing the VO, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Watched it whilst doing the VO. But she's just such a sweetheart, isn't she? Totally, totally. I, actually, before... before um, before we do anything, just to say, I know some of you have submitted some questions. If any of you have got any questions, please do submit them through the magic of the uh, email address, I think it is. Uh, and, and they'll get magically passed to me by Kelly, and then I will ask them on your behalf. Um, Kelly, can you remind me how long we're going to chat for? 40 minutes, is it? 30 minutes, perfect. Okay, so get them in soon. Um, before we start talking about the film, uh, and I know there are lots of RTS practitioners here will talk about the making of the film uh, and some of the production staff and producing and presenting, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think probably everybody's wondering how Gemma is, and I know you guys are still in touch with her, Stacey, yeah. I think most recently. Yeah, no, we, we speak often, actually. Um, actually, it should be mortified on my behalf because I've only got my um, pinky nails painted, <laughs> so that's why I'm sat like that, because I don't want to let it down. Um, but no, she's brilliant. We got on really well. There was a real sort of genuine report there, and um, she was just very... Um, she felt very familiar, like I go about with girls like Gemma. Um, but I, I think she's she's doing okay. I think she was a bit poorly a couple of weeks ago, wasn't she? Um, I think it's very sort of um, fluid. You know, she has good days, bad yeah. days. Um, but the kids are well, Clive's on top form. Good, mm. good. Well, that's obviously very good to hear. Um, uh, you, you guys have made uh, many episodes, um, but that's a very particular episode, mm. and I think, Everybody, all of us, we were well out of our comfort zone mm. looking for a story where we were going in search of someone very young who felt very relevant for our audience with a terminal illness. And we were obviously amazingly grateful to Gemma and her family mm. that they opened the door to us. How, how was it, you know, make, how, how was it, what was it like filming that story with all the practicalities of trying to make TV over that weekend from both your points of view? Let's start with you, Alice. Um, well, I would say it felt like an enormous privilege um, to be there, to, to be able to spend the weekend with her at such a sort of crucial time of her life. Um, but also it's a sort of compelling story because um, dying and sort of death, I suppose, is quite a taboo subject, but also could be quite a lonely um, experience. And what we found was the kind of opposite. It was a very warm, energetic, lively mm. household. And she had a huge amount of support from both the family and the community and all her friends and all of Ireland, really. Mm. We all found that quite touching, didn't we? Yeah. Do you know what I'm really proud of? I love that we didn't, because the temptation is, maybe a, a lazy approach would be to, you know, spend the entire time in a very sort of earnest manner and talking about death and, you know, God, this is so awful, this feels so unfair. And whilst those conversations are necessary, Actually, she is, you know, a girl in her 20s. She's got lots to say. And I think instinctively, I think her sort of natural default is she's an optimist. So I think I'm delighted that we showed that and her mm. on the tables and, you know, dancing with her man. And um, I think we all just felt so lucky. And when we were talking, and actually, you know, from, from your perspective, I think it's a really bold, um, important um, steer from you because I don't think it's an obvious one for sleeps over because sleeps over tonally is quite different to the stuff I do the investigations for example so I'm delighted that you sort of threw that in and said that's that's what you were after because I don't think we'd have gone down that route otherwise no, um, that route. but she's been approached by various different people and um, she spoke to one of our producers Warren and she was like I don't know I just I feel like I fancy this um, so we were just made up that she opened the door and let us in, yeah. And she was so accommodating. And all our gang and our family, everyone was, you know, lovely to have you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. I think you're being really modest. I think we know it was the power of Stacey, wasn't it? <laughs> that, that pulled, uh, <laughs> and the, the power of Warren. Uh, Warren, yeah. It, it was the power of Stacey, wasn't it? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't think there's many people she would have allowed to. It's such an intimate thing. Mm. Um, but from a sort of very practical producing point of view, Alice, uh, did you have to moderate any of the way that you normally shoot the shows for um, this story? Not as much as you would think, actually. We were sort of worried that she'd get really tired and she'd want to go and lie yeah. down, and she didn't at all. She was had more energy than the rest of us, actually. Yeah. Um, just more sensitive, sort of, in terms of planning it. Her, you know, we did psych tests, which is what we do often anyway. Um, yeah. But it's not, no, so from a sort of a duty of care point of view, we just sort of kept, we had long conversations beforehand about whether or not, you know, if she didn't, if it was too much for her to leave, you know, to tell us and we would sort of back off. But actually, mm. she was really happy for us to be there. Super robust, wasn't she? Yeah. And I know you guys had to have um, really sort of delicate conversations, you know, just. <laughs> If you're not here by the time yeah. the program goes out, you know how to, how do you want us to deal with that? So I feel really assured and really confident that you know duty of care sort of has always come first and foremost. It always does, but particularly for obvious reasons, you know, um, that was sort of the primary focus, wasn't it? Yeah. But um, yeah, a, a lot went into it prior mm. to us even arriving and picking up the camera. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Alice, tell us a little bit about how, how the production team, the size and the scale. Because, yeah. of course, Stacey, you always sleep over, mm -hmm. or once you didn't sleep over mm -hmm. with Hanam, but we made that very uh -huh. clear yeah, in yeah. that film <laughs> that you didn't sleep over. Obviously, we're absolutely transparent, but the key to the series mm -hmm. is Stacey sleeps over. But expect you guys don't necessarily sleep over. And how many of you are there, and how, how does it work from a production team point of view? Yeah, there's normally um, five of us. Somebody always stays with Stacey. And they Not get in my bed. With her. <laughs> in Downstairs. Her. Don't worry. Mattress. And that, that person gets a, a, a slightly unusual um, place to sleep. In this, in this house, they stayed in the Couple healing house. Oh, okay. Um, but it's been, there's been a range of interesting so, scenarios. What's been the, what's been the most the novel most place? I think the most interesting was one of them was um, the producer director sleeping next to you on an airbed with a giant pig next to her. <laughs> that was the highlight, I uh -huh. think. I remember what. Oh yeah. my goodness! Um, so this, so this, there's a producer director. I'm always there, um, sort of overseeing the editorial. Um, there's a producer who's the kind of main liaison with the family, um, and then Stacey. So there's five, there's normally about five of us. And how many cameras? We we shoot two cameras. Two cameras. Mm. Yeah, just because we're there for such a short amount of time, mm. and it's um, just to sort of get everything in the short amount of time we're there. We get sort of seventy two hours to make it. Stacey doesn't really get many breaks. No, but none of us do. But it's such, pretty good about. It's actually. such a joy, though. It's such a joy to make. You know, you get there on the Friday, and it is super immersive. And when like, I'm in the back of a cab or whatever, that's the first thing they'll say. Do you really stay there? And I'm like, I promise you, it's legit. Like we 100% stay there. Um, but it kind of reminds you as filmmakers as well. You know, sometimes we can be a bit sort of, oh, we're sort of tortured artists. We need weeks and weeks and weeks. Actually, we get there on the Friday. We leave on the Monday, and we've never made a dud film yet. So. No, no, it's a good discipline in terms of, yeah. I've got very used to sort of creating the storyline in my head as you're going along, what you've got, my notebook, and yeah. it's a good discipline for actually making a film in 72 hours. Mm. It's Definitely, yeah. I mean, you, you touched on this um, earlier, Stacey, um, the difference, you know, that you, you do obviously, you're known for your documentaries. You started in a documentary series as a, as a, as a character in the series, if you like, or mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a contributor. Um, More of a character. <laughs> a, a contributor who was such a character that you became, you became a, 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 a journalist and a presenter. How, how does this series differ from the other work that you do? Would you, can you distill that for us a little bit? Yeah, I, I suppose I feel less like a presenter. I, I think it's perhaps arguably a tiny bit more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm sort of a bit more on display, aren't I, in this series? Because yeah. you're sort of forced to offer opinion, I mm. suppose, with the BBC. I'm a bit more neutral, a bit more objective, I think. W, I've got a bit more freedom and I can say, oh, do you know, I think this or I think that. And sometimes there's rub um, and you can say in quite a candid manner, you know, why you sort of totally disagree with the family that you're sat having sort of spaghetti bolognese with. Um, so it's, it's it's a unique format, but I, I think it's brilliant. And I've said this, you know, you'd have heard this a thousand times, but I just, I think it's really crucial and really healthy and really necessary to hang out with people that you don't 
always understand or agree with or because I think increasingly we sort of surround ourselves with people that nod along at the same time as us. Um, so I think it's, I think there's a bit more of me in the sleep sofa. It was definitely something that we, we talked about a lot at the beginning of yeah. the series. And it's funny you, you saying that um, cab drivers and people that always say to you, do you actually sleep yeah. there? Because I mean, endlessly when I watch the cuts, I'm always saying to Alice, did you, did, did, has she brushed her teeth? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, brushing her teeth? Not, yeah. And she says, Stacey always says, why do I need to brush my teeth? And I was, made me laugh when I saw you brushing your teeth in they this love episode. The, the, the teeth brushing and turning the light off That's at night and getting in bed. Yeah, more of them. I'll get more of them. I think, I think because I think it is so critical, you know, mm. we're, we're, we're so conscious um, when we put these, when we mm. well, making any television, our relationship with the audience and our transparency and our, our promise to the audience. And, you know, when we came up with the title, mm. Sleep, Stacey Julie Sleeps Over, I mean, it's a very, very clear intent that yeah. you are staying over in someone's house. Okay. And I think the audience, I, I always worry that there's a, there's a sort of, large degree of cynicism amongst the audience and the audience will assume that things have been manufactured mm -hmm. to suit the people making the program yeah. uh, and that you know corners have been cut shall we say so I always think it's incredibly important that it's very very clear visually to the audience that you are you are there uh, you know for, the, for those 72 hours. And, and I get that cynicism because we've heard before haven't we that you know presenters or you know producers um, yeah. yeah they've sort of kind of alluded to the idea that they're staying but then they go and stay in a five-star hotel sort of 19 miles away yeah but, um, yeah. yeah and I do think I think I think there's this kind of it's you know we again you know in television we use the word immersive a lot but I think there is something highly immersive mm. about you turning up they open the door to you they've never met you they know who you are it's exciting there's we always have children because we want families mm -hmm. almost always I think well, not well yeah almost always um and uh and, and you and you stay. It's it's like going to stay with someone for the weekend, isn't they're it? It's as close to that experience, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and they're such good sports. We sort of, you know, we never underestimate because if someone, if if the telly called me up and said, Stacey, you know, we sort of, <laughs> we'd like to come and stay around your house. There'll be five <laughs> of us. There'll be two cameras. We'll be asking you deeply personal questions. You up for it? I'd be like, absolutely not. So I just, <laughs> I I never ever ever take it for granted, and I always say that, you know. You know, it's never kind of a given that they're going to allow us in. It does create a slightly different dynamic, yeah, doesn't it? Totally. Yeah, talk a little bit about walking that line, because, of course, if you ask a difficult question on Friday night, you're there for breakfast on Saturday <laughs> morning. You're not cutting and running. And the discipline, you know, and the nature of these films, you know, what these films aren't is, you know, 48 hours of making nice yeah. and then 24 hours of, you know, yeah. really going in for the juggler. That, that's not the compact. Yeah. I mean, that's not, that's not yeah. what you'd be yeah. up for. That's not what we want. And that's not what they expect because they've watched, you know, we've got yeah. lots of episodes now. So how do you, how do you negotiate? Because you do have to ask difficult questions. How, how, how do you, is there a sort of time? Is there a moment over the weekend where you think, I feel now I've got the measure of these people and I'm going to ask some harder questions? How, how do yeah. you process that? We normally have a chat, don't we? We'll yeah. be in a toilet, sort of <laughs> talking a bit quieter, just saying, because, you know, I suppose as well, I need to be briefed, but we never leave the house. Yes. So Alice needs to relate to me what I haven't got quite right, what I've missed, what she wants more of, um, and, you know, things that are non-negotiable, things that we could perhaps leave till later or I'm sort of further down the, the weekends. But I'm always quite, I always, my sort of, I have this discipline where I think if I'm going to say it as a, pe as a piece to camera, I need to be willing to say it to them. And I think as long as you're not sort of unnecessarily confrontational for the sake of it or bombastic, or I think as long as you calmly say in a rational way, can you explain a bit more about this? Or lots of people will totally not get why you're on that page. On the whole, people are, generally up for having that discussion there have yeah. been two for me that there was quite a lot of rub yeah um, the tiger king yeah and um so a lad who had two lions and a panther mm -hmm. puma. puma two okay, lions I'm nodding yeah two, <laughs> li two lions and a puma um in quite a confined space mm. in nottinghamshire mm. and there were obvious questions to be mm. asked you know in terms of animal welfare etc um and i just I think as long as you're, there's a sort of basic level of respect, 
that's my job. Mm. And I hate the idea of getting in the car and thinking, you know, you should have asked that. Yeah. So I always just say, just bite the bullet and say it, Stacey. The worst they can do is kick you out, um, which has yet to Which happen. has never happened. Yeah. Um, and our family that were um, uh, child-led parenting. Yeah, no rules. That sort of felt quite, yeah, quite um, unusual to me, I suppose. The idea that they were sort of desperate to, to travel the world and visit certain continents and saying, oh, we wouldn't kind of, you know, uh, I would, we wouldn't go for jabs or, you know, we sort of shine away from modern medicine. That, that just felt sort of slightly strange to me, I suppose. I felt like they were romanticising. They had a sort of romantic idea of what a trip away would look like. And I've seen children dying of malaria and they wouldn't be taking malaria pills so there were you know kind of a bit of back and forth there but we get there and how much Alice in in before Stacey arrives when you're negotiating with Mm. the families Mm. let's talk a little little bit about casting actually in a minute but how how much do you uh, uh, explain to them that some you know the areas that will be covered how how well briefed are they so that they know so for example the, the guy, the family in Nottinghamshire with the animals. I mean, yeah. how much of a conversation will you have about the difficult well, we plan, questions that we plan Stacey quite, might be asking? We plan the weekends quite... Um, they're very well planned because there's not very much time. So they, they're always involved in the discussions about what we're going to cover. Mm. Um, and whenever we go and see them, we always say, Stacey, we'll ask you the difficult questions. So, you know, the questions... So they're kind of aware that you're, there's, mm. there, there isn't going to be a subject that's off limits. Um, so... Um, so there's this, yeah, so they're, so, they're, so they're sort of prepared. And also, actually, I was going to say, the first series was much harder because people used to Google Stacey and they would go, <laughs> Stacey, do investigates? And then they'd be like, we don't want an investigation into, yeah. our, into our life. And actually, since then, people watch episodes and they see you and they mm. see what we've done. Actually, most people are very happy to be involved. Mm. Some people. The people who have got something that they are, you know, for example, the Reese and his lions, he was less keen because, um, because mm. he thought we were going to, stitch them up but yeah. people are generally generally happy with the results of the program well because you always give them a fair trial yeah and that's it i think you just got to be fair i think it's it's not about you being this kind of no nonsense um interviewer it's just about having a kind of grown-up conversation about quite interesting topics that lots of us have you know outsiders have an opinion on um, but i think what w do well and, and what firecracker do well is actually we continue the relationships and then before broadcast Alice will always go and sit with our families and watch the film with them and that's why I feel like you know we can always sort of walk away thinking actually we did give them a fair go because we have to sit there and show them the film and not every not every production company does that and not every broadcaster does no, that. No I think we were very we all agreed didn't we as yeah. a team that that was going to be very important and I think this comes back to the idea that people are opening up their homes and not sleeping yeah. in their beds. And I'm always struck when you go mm. around and, and you get the tour of the house, there's always a room with an extra bed in it because mm. of course someone's giving up their bedroom yeah. mm. so that so that mm. in almost every case, mm-hmm. so that you can have, you know, a comfortable bed in the mm-hmm. house for the weekend. And I think I think, you know, it's a very good discipline for one of you know, for filmmakers that, mm. you know, whatever you do, you have to be prepared mm. to show it to the person who's the subject yeah. of your documentary, because it, if it doesn't withstand that level of scrutiny, obviously it's very, very different if you're doing a journalistic investigation sure. into a wrong, yeah. and a, you know, a law break if or something. If it's in the public's interest, there's yes. a right to reply, et cetera, yeah. Absolutely, but, yeah. but, but when it's just a family mm. who, have, who, we, who we deem to be really interesting mm. subjects of a documentary, and they agree to let us in, mm. uh, then I think, I think that, that is a really important discipline. Um, Alice, do you want to talk a little bit about the um, casting process? Yeah. It's quite rigorous, isn't it? And I, yeah. I, I, I don't, from your point of view, how, do you want to explain well, we, a little bit about we how we go about choosing for, the families? Um, we basically look for um, families, I suppose, that would um, have public interest. And then it's either a community you don't know very much about, perhaps, um, or somebody who's made headlines and they're doing something you're not really sure about. And then the process is a case of, if it's a mixture of, of Bringing people up um, could be sort of street casting, which we've done a bit of, or um, it, the, the sort of finding finding a particular community and then finding a way in and then speaking to lots of people. And it takes a long time. Mm. And um, 
and then we have the conversations with you about what kind of areas we're interested in, and then we send you casting tapes, mm. and it's a, so it's a it's a conversation between us all, and Stacey's involved yeah. in that as well. And Stacey, you 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 you're you're across that casting process as well, yeah. aren't you? So you'll you'll pitch in ideas, or you'll say I, I that's not interesting to me because I've done it a lot in exactly my other life, right. in my other documentaries, or I'm particularly interested in this. Exactly I'm right. trying to think of some things that you've, you've... The one that I was delighted that we were able to get was um, our Hasidic Jewish family. I just, I've got such a soft spot for Mordecai. I just, <laughs> Rabbi Mordecai was just such a gen. And I just feel like, I feel like it's quite, um, in some instances, it can feel like quite an insular community. So the idea that Mordecai, you know, he was just such a dream, wasn't he? And he was a, a very um, conservative religious man. And typically him and, you know, we would never hang out. When am I going to hang out with Mordecai? Yes. You know, and he was, <laughs> but he was like honest, you. like he was teaching me. He just taught me so much. And he was, everything he said was just so profound. And we spent time in, you know, his home and he had loads of kids and his wife was, you know, she was kind of a good sport and I just, I learned a huge amount. And it was at a time when anti-Semitism was sort of always in the headlines, mm. but I, for whatever reason, and I've said this a couple of times, I feel like when um, Jewish people are, are being judged or um, there are preconceived ideas about them, there isn't the same level of desire to tackle that. Um, so I just wanted people to see him first and foremost as a man, um, and I think we did that with with the film. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, very definitely. Um, some questions from the audience. So I'm going yeah. to I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to read them on behalf of you. But thank you for um, thank you for sending them in. Um, I think this is a really interesting question. Um, Stacey, did meeting Gemma provoke any changes in your day-to-day -day life? That's such a good question. Yeah. Yes, is the it's answer. A really good question. Um, I mean, I'm sort of, I don't know, since, I don't know, the last couple of years, I'm having this weird sort of existential crisis where I'm just terrified of dying. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't know why, because to my knowledge, everything is sort of fine. But I think I'm just having such a lovely time. Like I said in that film, I can't quite believe it. You know, beautiful home, my boy, my gang, my, you know, career, I just couldn't go any better. So I think, oh, fuck, I just, ah, I want this to go on and on and on. Um, so sp spending time with Gemma just reminded me, you know, I don't want to sort of sound too much of a cliche, but it's just every single day you just got to go for it. Mm. And actually I came home and I was due a smear test and made sure I had my smear test and then asked them to check, you know, everything else while mm. I was there. Mm. Um, a bit of a predictable answer, but that's what she will do for lots of people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. I, I think that's one of the very strong things about the legacy of the yeah. film. Yeah, and she worked, yeah. you know, she she's touched so many people. Like we met people at that do, mm. and they were just so sort of starry eyed because, you know, for whatever reason, she just really resonated. They just really took to her and she gives them so much. Mm. Lots of women who were very lonely or very mm. poorly themselves mm. or you know, various different reasons, but she was, yeah. Mm. Alice, a question for you from the audience. Um, you must have so much content to work through after a whole weekend of filming and two cameras, obviously. How long does the editing process take and how do you decide what makes the final cut? Hmm. <laughs> um, actually, um, interestingly, not it's it's not as much as other things I've worked on. It's actually, I find this fairly straightforward. Um, because so you roughly write how many hours of rushes do you have? Um, Prox. Gosh, good question. I've put um, you on the spot now. It's a six week edit. Mm. And it's hours wise. Oh gosh, I don't know the answer to that. Maybe it's like probably shoot for about twelve uh probably finish for about ten hours a day. Yeah. So it's probably about four, forty or fifty hours and you've got two cameras, so mm -hmm. but they're do, they're yeah, generally shooting the same, same thing. Yeah. yeah. Um and we've got a fairly straight we've got a fairly um clear idea of what we think usually have a fairly clear idea of what we, how we think the film's going to be before we go in to a certain degree because of the very nature of you arrive and then we're sort of there's normally a plan of what we're going to film um and then obviously whatever happens takes over mm. but um i find them as in terms of other things i've done i've worked on lots of rig shows where you have endless amounts of footage that sort of you just have to kind of this i find mm. and you're there narrating it as well so it's actually straightforward i find not not completely straightforward yeah. but 
yeah. um, quite a bit more self-contained. Yeah, it's quite self-contained. And, and have you found that working through now three series, you've got a much clearer idea yeah. of how the edit should go and yeah. the pacing of the stories, not just yeah. in what you're shooting, but how you're cutting it? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Um, and you could so when you're on the shoots, you're sort of aware of that as well. And then you often know that you've shot a scene that's going to be, you know, like in this, mm -hmm. we had two scenes that were sort of doing the same thing. And you're kind of even aware of that when you're planning it. So you're trying to give every scene a different purpose. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, yeah. You become that quite... can sometimes be tricky, isn't it? Because yeah. I think naturally, you know, you're, you're spending 12, 15 hours with these people. So the conversation just flows and then they say something really compelling and you're like, shit, we sort of don't want to have this conversation here. We thought we were going to have it mm. there. Mm. Yeah. Um, that's, so, quite, that's quite tricky, actually. Yeah. Mm. What used to happen the first few episodes is you'd arrive and then you'd literally tell the whole story in the opening scene and you'd be there going, you can't <laughs> stop, stop <laughs> having this conversation. Because you're trying to pace out. Yeah, out I know. You're trying to pace out the storyline so it kind of spreads across 72 hours. Otherwise, you're like, basically got like a sort of three minute scene which is telling the whole <laughs> that, story that is hard and so it's this pacing is, is is sometimes quite tricky that's always you have to go can you not have this conversation here and have it later and that's and will you do that would you step yeah we in? do do that yeah but, I, but then that's kind of annoying as well sometimes to it's be. not but it's hard isn't it because we sort of we need things we need to produce things because we're so short and tired but mm. naturally you sort of want to follow the actuality so it's yeah it's a different different way of working in that regard yeah mm. um we've probably got time yeah we've got time for one or two more questions um uh the, this question uh, which you'll both answer in different ways maybe we'll start with alice what's your advice for young people interested in producing this kind of material so from producer's point of view and then take that one first and then you can talk about presenting mm -hmm. Getting a TV. Um, yeah, sort of, I guess, making this this kind of stuff. How would you get to a point if you were, you know, young and in this industry to get to a point where you could work on these kind of immersive docs? Um, I think what's really important is to find out what you're interested in. I mean, look at the companies that make the kind of stuff you're interested in. Write to them. Write a compelling letter about why you're, what's your USP and why you're interested. And just keep persisting and be sort of tenacious and diligent about and, and be if you've got a clear idea because I think lots of people in TV don't always know what they're going to do yeah. and if you've got something you are interested in mm. just keep going at it and I think from my point of view is um, enthusiasm and sort of you know knowing what you want to do is quite often quite rare when you're starting out what did you how did you what was your I don't mm. know if I know what your first job was how did you start in TV I was just a runner and then I but, um, I was just sort of really enthusiastic and did everything um on a broad range of shows on a broad range of shows yeah and how quickly did you work out that you wanted to work in this sort of doc space Do quite quickly I think um but I, I've done quite a lot I've done a sort of really broad range of stuff but now that's kind of that's the this is all I like this is all I like doing Lots of people say different things. Like lots of people say, um, do only one thing. And lots of people say, do mm. like you've obviously done a massive mm. range yeah, of stuff. Yeah, I'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. I'd, <laughs> literally anything. No. <laughs> um, How, um, remind everyone. Maybe some people. Do you know what I'm saying on that note? That yeah. if somebody writes to me and they yeah. they show massive enthusiasm, like for this, that would be I would. You know, and they've watched it and they love it and they really, that's, that, that is, you know, that is important, I think. Absolutely. And I, I think absolutely watch television. I mean, it's, yeah. it's shocking the number of people that might come and meet you and you say, yeah, come and have a cup of tea. And you say, what do you watch? Or, uh, particularly if you, if you work on a channel, what do you watch on our channels? And people sort of look at you in a slightly vague way. Oh. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's no good, is it? Um, Stacey, um, remind us all how you started and yes. what your advice would be to someone who might want to follow your path. Uh, uh, so my, my journey, but my, my journey, I was a contributor when I was 20. I'm 35 now. So I've been working in telly 15 years. But yeah, it was very sort of organic. My boyfriend hates that word, but... It was very good. I was a contributor and I suppose I sort of was, um, I remember the guy that gave me my first gig actually and he was so generous because I obviously wasn't an established journo. I was this sort of mouthy, opinionated girl from Luton Airport. But I remember him saying to me very, and this was such sound advice, he said, look, there'll be a temptation to sort of conform and feel like 
you need to sound the same as everybody else and dress the same as everybody else. He said, there's thousands of journos. If that's what I wanted, I would have gone to them. I like that you're sort of inquisitive and you've got something to say. So sort of found my feet, um, but was much less involved. I was just a sort of presenter for a couple Mm. of weeks. And then over the years, you sort of understand a bit more about how television works and get a bit more involved in pre-production, recce's. Um, I'm not very experienced in the edit. I probably need to work on that. But um, yeah, I suppose I'll present a range of different programs. I do the documentaries, which I suppose are my babies. That's mm-hmm. the stuff that I feel really proud of. Um, but I sort of lean into entertainment as well. Escapism, I think, is really important. Um, and you've got your own production company. I know, it's bonkers, isn't it? I know. So I learned, I sort of learned how it all worked and the relationships with the independent production companies and the broadcasters. And then I thought, well, for years, I'm working for other indies. Um, so yeah, we, we, we've set up our own company and I'm now talking about risk assessments and on the phone to Blackpool Council and talking about drone <laughs> shots, which is really dull. Um, but it's, it's, it's a good learning curve for me, yeah. yeah. Brilliant, I think we're out of time. I think we're, we're supposed to stop now, aren't we? Yeah, people are nodding. The final episode, uh, this one, uh, for the third series of Stacey Dooley Sleeps Over airs on Monday on W at 10. So if you want to watch it, or more importantly, please tell other people to watch it if you've enjoyed it or you think there are people out there who would enjoy the series. Uh, And as importantly, all of the episodes, all of the previous episodes are available on you, are now available on UK TV Play. Which is our which is our iPlayer? Yeah, if you don't great. know what that is, that's really great. and because because W is now a free to air channel, everything is now available, and there are 15, 16, yeah, twelve, a special, and three. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, my maths sixteen. Right? Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah, there's sixteen episodes of Stacey Do. Um, I'm yeah, someone's grinning. There are sixteen episodes <laughs> of Stacey Dooley sleeps over. Uh, they're all so different. Uh, the contributors um, are all so different but they are all really closely stick to the format of the show. I mean, the format is the same, isn't it? Mm. Every single time. Mm. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot really quickly before I say thank you and goodbye. What's your favourite? Yeah, Alice, what's your fave? Alice won't answer. You go first. Um, oh, can I have you out? You say first. <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, I actually really enjoyed this one when I was watching it again. It's got, this has got, you know, humour and emotion mm. and great characters, good story. Shall I tell you my top three? Yeah, top three. Okay, top three is good. <laughs> I hate when people get asked these questions and they don't answer. Um, Mordecai, my one true love. Um, <laughs> so sorry. No, you do know. The island, the, the Scottish. Oh, you fa- You like them. Alice Scottish had a people. crush on one of our contributors. No, it's not. <laughs> Breaking news. But he was like, but I when so he, was, did not. he was back in the day. He's made that up. <laughs> No, like you had a crush on him. I, I had a soft spot for Rock. What was his name? But back in the day, 20 years ago, maybe Rock. Rock. I'm just mindful this is being filmed. So, so that was very, very but good But Rock point. was quite charming. He was the guy who owns the Scottish islands in the Hebrides. And I could see Alice with him 20 years ago. The eco-warrior. Yeah, I didn't have yeah. a crush on it. They were <laughs> but I liked Mordecai, the Mormons, I really liked. Yeah, 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 yeah. And... I like the cage fighters. Cage, yeah, yeah cage nice fighters. family. Yeah, they were lovely. They're all brilliant. They're all yeah, brilliant. They're all they're all exceptional. I really urge anyone who hasn't seen all of them um, to to watch them. They're they're, they're mm. all a fantastic watch. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Stacey, thank you. so much for doing Likewise, this. Nice. Which was your favourite? Yes. yes. Um, I think I think this one. Actually. This is special. Yeah, I really wanted. I, I really, I said, please go and your, try and find. Idea. It was slightly my baby. I said, please go and try and find. I, I've been really affected by um, the rise in sort of bloggers and vloggers and young women talking about, um, you know, their cancer and their, mm. their terminal illness. And I just felt because so many people are, were opening up their lives and their stories, mm. it felt appropriate that we could go and ask to spend time with someone. And I just knew. I, I well. I feel that for our audience, this is a this is a film that will really, really resonate. Mm. It's got all the it's got all the beats, and as you say, it's very funny. It's very charming. Mm. She's hugely charismatic, but we're also tackling a really mm. taboo subject. So I, I think my favorite. But it's all, having said that, it's probably always the one that's just about to go out. That I'm you loved her arm as well, didn't I you? I did love her arm. Yes, I did. 
uh, our, our, our lady with that was for International Women's Day. Mm. So that's another great episode. Yeah. We won't tell you what that is. You just need to go and have a look on UK TV Play. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. For coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.